But I have a special friend here today that I love like I love my own brother. And that some of you know him as Bounty Killer, but I know him as Rodney Price. I'm glad you're here. And Mother Ivy, you and I, we go together like Mackie goes with Ronnie. We stick together. I love that woman. I want to read a scripture before we go any further. The Lord put this on my heart, and there's two things you won't find many of in this Bible, and one of them is a long sermon, and another one is a long prayer. But if you, if you have your Bible, I want you to turn to Exodus, the 32nd chapter. The Lord laid this on my heart to share with you today. Beginning with the ninth verse. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them. And I will make thee, Moses, a great nation. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why doth thou wax wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, for mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thine own self and saidst unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do against the people. Play have thine own way, Lord, if you don't mind for just a minute. In this passage that I read to you today, there's three things that God spoke to me about that I want to share with you. God was angry with the people because they had turned away from him and had gone to idols and made idol gods and started worshiping them. And God was angry. And he decided, I'm going to kill them. God is a killer. Bounty has the name, but God is a killer. Take the beat out of it. Just slow. God is a killer. He said in Psalms 9, 9 and 17, the weak it shall be turned into hell. God said he'd do that on all the nations that forget God. But there's three reasons why God did not destroy the children of Israel. And it applies to you, and that's the reason I want to tell you about it. The first reason that God didn't destroy the children of Israel for worshiping idols was Moses. Moses stood up to God. And evidently this had not happened only once, it had happened before. Because when God starts to do what he's going to do, he looks at Moses and says, let me alone. Now, when you have so much going on for you that God looks at you and says, let me alone. Let me alone. When the weak takes on the strong, when the inferior takes on the superior, it happened several times in this Bible. Gideon had 32,000 soldiers, but God said you got too many. 
And he ended up taking 300 out of the 32,000. And the weak took on the strong. I wish somebody could hear that. When David went before Goliath with a slingshot. And all of the soldiers and armies were afraid of Goliath. The weak took on the strong. I wish somebody could hear this now. And God looks at Moses, and Moses is the weak one, but he says, let me alone. Because he knew if Moses started, he had something. There are people in this congregation today that the reason you are still alive is there is a Moses somewhere in your life. That has stood in the gap for you. And that has prayed for you. When God would have said I've had enough of it. I've seen enough of your problems. I've seen enough of your foolishness. But somebody. I feel like preaching a little while. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody stood in the gap for you. It might have been a preacher. It might have been a church pastor. It may have been an evangelist. It may have been the prayers of your mother. But somebody said, no, God. You can't do that. Uh-uh, uh-uh, no, 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 no. You've got to give them one more chance. Somebody say hallelujah. You've got to give them another chance. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's the first reason God didn't destroy them. Moses was there. And the, and the second reason was Moses said, God, if you destroy these people, the enemy is going to say, you brought them out into the land to let them die, and you didn't love them, you hated them. You didn't take care of them. And God is not going to let anybody point their finger in his face and say, you didn't do what you should have done. The indictment will never read that God forsook you because he said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you, but I'll go with you all the way, even to the end of the world. Somebody clap your hands and shout out. Moses said, God, if you let these people die, if you destroy these people, the Egyptians are going to laugh at you. Nobody will what? Nobody will love that God. Nobody will love that God. And God looks at Moses and says, let me alone. I'm tired of you, Moses. I want to kill these people. And he said to Moses, if you let me kill them, I'm going to make a greater nation out of you than I was going to make out of them. But Moses wasn't for sale. Moses couldn't be bought. Somebody say hallelujah. He said, no, 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 no. You promised Abraham and you promised Isaac and you promised Israel that you're going to bless their seed and you can't lie. You're not a man. You can't lie. Somebody say hallelujah. I've never seen anything like the anointed handkerchief that I've been sending out as I write people's name on it for a miracle. Reverend Jim Whittington wants to send you an anointed prayer cloth. And God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them. God is going to write your name on a miracle when I write your name on this prayer cloth. Call now and Reverend Whittington will personally write your name on this anointed hanky and send it to you right away. Called Reverend Jim Whittington wants to send you an anointed prayer cloth. The day you call in, I'm there. I'm, I'm here. I'm right here right, waiting to write your name on a prayer cloth and put it in the mail before the sun goes down today. Or write to Jim Whittington, P.O. Box 77317, Atlanta, Georgia, 30357. To the address on your screen for your anointed prayer cloth. Miracles are happening. People are receiving something from God, and you can be the next one.